So we're backstage right now with Matt Odemark from Jars of Clay, and Hello. what happened tonight on the uh, little little wet out there tonight? A few things happened tonight. A, a lot of things happened tonight. Uh, more things than often than usually happen. Uh, now it's been an amazing, another amazing year for us. It's so fast up in New Hampshire, and um, and just love playing this festival. And tonight's a great example of why because three songs into our set, the heavens just opened up and just mercilessly just dumped on the crowd and um, the crowd didn't even look, they didn't even blink they were just like what that's all you got and, and they, they just they got more into it the harder it rained and so uh, which only um, egged us on so we had a very soggy very wet I think I blew up my amp mid show because of water damage but um, somehow we made a show come off and it was uh, and actually you know made for a pretty memorable night so it was awesome do you have any preventative things for when it rains or is it I saw them bring garbage bags but is there anything other than that that you really plan ahead for you know not really um l luckily uh, most of the equipment is you know wireless or passive or stuff like that so you know the risk of electrocution is somewhat mitigated um but uh yeah but you know I had to wipe everything down so the rain is kind of a it's kind of a, kind of a tough one to uh to pull the show off in but but um, luckily the crew here at SoFest is so pro, and they were right on top of it with tarps and this queen and kind of kept us well um, managed. So um, otherwise, if they hadn't have been there, we wouldn't have been able to pull it off. So. I'd say we didn't make it to flood before the skies opened up. I know. Well, that was a weird thing. Usually it waits until we play flood, but um, we sort of felt like once it had already pretty nearly flood, we might have flooded, we might as well play it. So, so it was a different order than usually happens. Can you talk why Steve Mason's not here, and how long has it been since you haven't played with him in Jars of Clay? Yeah, so it's been a pretty exciting time for Steve, our other guitar player. Um, he, uh, his, uh, his wife is, is due any day now with their third baby, and so um, New Hampshire's kind of a, it's kind of far from Nashville. It took us 23 hours to get here, so um, that's a, that's long enough that if you know if your wife calls and says, "Hey, honey, I'm going into labor," you could miss him. So that that did not seem like a good call for him to be here. So. We had um, a longtime friend of the band, um, an amazing musician, um, fill in for Steve tonight, um, and Andrew Osenga, and um, who uh, is a friend and neighbor of mine, and um, also uh, just an incredible singer and guitar player. So, sort of held it down for Steve, which is pretty unusual. We uh, don't do very many shows like that, but you know, um, occasionally weddings, and babies, you know, important family events happen, and uh, so, um, so. The only Dan Dan's always bitter because Dan, our singer, because he's uh, he can never miss a show. But everybody else, you know, can get somebody to fill in for him. So, but um, but yeah, so that's where Steve was tonight. And can you explain? Last night, you guys ended up getting in about one, about two hours later than expected. Yeah, we expected it to take about you know 19 hours or so to get here. It took us closer to 23 or four. And um, unfortunately, we were supposed to play a late night um, acoustic performance, and um, we missed that. So darn that, um, you know, darn that New York City, Boston traffic, um, that'll get you. So uh, we didn't quite, we didn't quite plan well enough in advance for that. You, we would, you know, you just don't think that it couldn't possibly take longer than 20 hours to get anywhere, could it? And yeah. so, uh, so yeah. So we were a little bit late coming in, but we were able to make up the show this afternoon, and um, it actually turned out amazing. We had, we had a great turnout this afternoon for the acoustic show. It was so it's been a, it's been um, for all the mishaps, it's been probably one of our more memorable Soul Fest uh, evenings. So. How's the crowd reacted to Shelter, the single and the album? The crowd reaction's been fun. I mean, the record was really written to be experienced corporately, communally. So the songs, you know, more so than even than many of our records, uh, you know, just really thrive in a lot of environment. They're, they're the most dynamic and, and um, you know we get the crowd sing along and it's just pretty um, just a big charge for us and so so um so that's just been a real treat they've to take the shelter on the road and, um, and we've had a busy year of touring with the new record we've been out um, all year we did a spring tour with Matt Marr and um, also in the winter we had a rock and worship road show a big multi-band tour that took us all over the west coast and um, have another month of that coming up in November and some Christmas dates and club shows with Dave Barnes and so we've, we've had a, one of our busiest years of touring in a long time so uh, 
so I think that record's a big part of that. On the Rock and Roll Worship, what was that one? Rock and Worship Roadshow. That one. Yeah. What was it like doing the Obla D uh, thing? Yes, the, I saw that. Our most viral video experience yet. Um, yeah, there's a, if you haven't seen it, um, search YouTube for Obla D, uh, Jars of Clay, Obla D, Obla Da, Jars of Clay, Mercy Me, or whatever. Um, we did a really fun thing at the end of that tour. All the artists got together and did sort of a, uh, impromptu uh, cover of uh, a classic Beatles track and um, you know it was supposed to just be kind of a goofy thing for fans you know just to kind of throw up and um, it just kind of took on a life of its own and, and really uh, turned into something pretty fun and, um, so you have to check it out it's, it's, uh, it was a lot of fun I mean, you know it looks like we poured hours of effort and you know we really went through it two or three times and it just kind of all came together and, and, and um, that video is a real reflection of the spirit of that tour that's just that was just a special tour for us um, very seldom do you get five or six different bands together that all just really enjoyed each other and, and um, bonded so quickly and so we had a, we had a fun time okay, we'll, we'll, we'll link to that so then you all see it okay. and what is next for Jars of Clay where do you go from here in the next year Any what's your touring schedule like where are you going to be yeah like I said we're going to be we're, we're out quite a bit this fall um, they added another leg to that road show tour with us and Mercy Me um, so we're, uh, that'll be out in November. Um, we'll be doing mostly Southeast kind of stuff. So look for us if you live in the Southeast, um, or in the kind of lower Midwest, Oklahoma, Kansas, that kind of area. Um, um we're going to do a club tour up in the Northeast with, uh, Dave Barnes. Um, we're really looking forward to that. That's going to be all acoustic shows, um, kind of primarily requests and very conversational, um, Something we started doing on the road show were these VIP shows where um, fans could pay a little extra and we would give them an acoustic show before before the big show and um, and they could just kind of request whatever songs they wanted to hear and we would learn them ahead of time. And had such a fun time doing that, we decided to do a run dates like that. So that's what we're doing this fall and that'll be really fun. And, um, and we have some Christmas dates coming up in December as well. So, so busy touring and then next January we get to jump back in the studio and start putting, pulling material together for our next record. When's the last time you've done two shows in the same day? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. We used to do it a lot in the early days. <laughs> um, so yeah, but uh, Soul Fest every year, they, they have us do, and usually we play the evening slot, you know, 8 o'clock show, and then they put us on a late night, the same night. So usually Soul Fest is, is always kind of a marathon for us. So. But yeah, it's a special place up here. If you have, if you've never been to a soul fest up in New Hampshire, you should make the, uh, the pilgrimage because it's uh, there's not really you know there are fewer fewer festivals around and there's, there, there aren't any like soul fest. It's a pretty special place. And for Dadario products, do you have a favorite that you tend to go to all the time, string wise, capos? Is there a certain capo you like more than anything else? Or? You know, we use a ton of Dadario products. Um, guitar wise. You know, the studio, I've always loved the Phosphor Bronze products, just the straight up. Uh, I just like the tone of them, and um, they perform great. And uh, I play acoustic primarily, so I'm using those on acoustics. Um, and, uh, you know, on live, we do use um, the coated strings, um, just, you know, because we get the longevity out of them, which is nice. And um, uh, so, so the, and they perform really great for us. Other than that, you know, we're using tons of stuff. We're planting waves, cables everywhere, and um, um, capos. I've been using those. I really like all the different capo options. That's really, it's really, really nice. Um, some of the, the screw action capo ones are really great on electric guitar, where tuning gets real, you know, where you just need to have just the right amount of tension. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, yeah. they are our staple. That's it.